Today, let's talk about some positives of being blind or visually impaired. Hi everyone, it's Carrie from Live Accessible. We all face problems being blind or visually impaired on a day-to-day -day basis and it can be on an accessibility level or on a social level in society and all these kind of things. It's pretty easy to find problems that we face and things that suck about being blind. But today I want to share 10 positives of being blind or visually impaired. And some of these are serious and some of them are a little bit lighthearted. It's not that I would rather be blind or visually impaired. I mean, most of us, if there was a chance or if there was a way to gain back our sight or get sight, we would probably leap at the chance. But right now, a lot of different conditions don't actually have that option. So I prefer to see the brighter side of things. These aren't in any particular order or anything. So here are my 10 positives of being blind or visually impaired. So number one is we usually use our other senses better. It's not necessarily that our other senses are actually better, but we pay a lot more attention. Like for example, a sighted person might look at a counter and say, oh, it's completely clean, but a blind person, you know, we, we touch everything. If you touch that same counter and ugh, there's something really gross on there and it's actually not very clean. Another example is my mom is always losing her keys in her purse. She would spend like a couple minutes just digging through her purse and she wouldn't be able to find it. My dad takes her purse and just puts the sticks his hand in and oh, there's her keys. Also, we pay attention to the sounds around us more. So whether it's crossing the street, sometimes a sighted person's like, oh, we can cross the road, but wait, I hear something, what is that? And then they actually look and oh, okay, there's a car coming, so hold on. Sometimes it's just that we're more aware of it and that we're paying more attention. Number two is you always have a story to tell if you're in the mood. I mean, I'm always on Uber, and it's not like every trip I share my story or anything because sometimes you just want to sit there and do something on your phone or just relax. But sometimes when the drivers are being respectful, they can be curious and you know, when you're open, you can tell them either your story or what vision you have or what technology you use or how you do certain things. And you know, it also is an opportunity to educate people because, I mean, just look at the blind meme that's going around. It's a girl holding a cane and she has her phone in her other hand. And there are some people who are seeing all these kinds of things like she's faking it, can you believe this, whatever. And, and, and it just shows that people don't understand that blindness is a spectrum. So there are times that it's really great to share your story a little bit or at least educate people and I'm not saying to do that all the time or that you have to but it is a good chance to have a story to have a conversation topic and to educate people number three is that you usually see the better side of people I mean there are really bad people out there but there are actually a lot of people that are willing to help and are open to helping you in the way that you need. But it's just nice to be able to see that there are some really good people out there. And that kind of goes hand in hand with positive number four, which is you really can get to know who you can depend on, who you can trust, and who your real friends are. It might seem a little bit harsh, but when you're losing your vision or you don't have any vision, sometimes, you know, there are people that you thought were your friend, but they don't actually want to stay with you and help you, or they're not willing to do that. I mean, you don't just want fair weather friends, you know? It's great to know that certain people are who you can really depend on, who you can trust. And, and I think that's a really good thing. Number five is sometimes it's really good not to see certain things. Again, I'm not saying that I'd rather not be able to see. I'm saying that because we're blind and visually impaired, we don't have to see gross things like people picking their nose or scratching in awkward places or, or doing like, you know, 
other awkward <laughs> things that you rather not see. And also, I don't like horror movies or gory details or all like that, that kind of stuff, so I can just, quote, not see it. And I think that can be a good thing sometimes. <laughs> Number six is technology. We live in an amazing era where technology keeps going forward and advancing and there's so many cool things that are always coming out. Just think about all the assistive technology that we do have. We have TalkBack, VoiceOver, JAWS, NVDA. We have OCR, like KNFB Reader, Seeing AI, and Vision AI, and object recognition. I mean, who would have thought a couple decades ago that we would be able to have all these things and in such a small package like a phone. They are so much fun to play with and it's great that we can be a part of advancing this kind of thing because it helps people all around the world. Speaking of technology, if you use a screen reader on your phone like VoiceOver or TalkBack, you can use dim screen or screen curtain and you save battery and also you can have privacy. Sometimes people are really nosy and they want to see what are you doing on your phone and then you know they can look at your phone and oh, it's black. Number seven is being able to be creative and inventive. And this kind of goes hand in hand with number six, technology, because now when we want to do something, especially with technology being how it is, we can find a solution to do it. I mean, there are so many people that are blind or visually impaired that are pilots, artists, filmmakers, woodworkers, fashion experts, YouTubers. You can be a lawyer, a doctor, a gamer, all these kind of things and so many more. And you might need help and you might need adaptation, you might need assistive technology, but there is always a way that you could possibly do something. Number eight is having a lot of free access to information and books. There are so many free services like the National Library for the Blind and Physically Handicapped, there's BARD, there's um, Bookshare, especially if you're a student. I think it's great that we have access to millions of books. Just think about it, we don't need to go to the library or buy books or buy audiobooks. I mean, you can still do all these things, but you don't necessarily have to. You can also read audio and daisy books while you're doing other things like cooking and cleaning and exercising and all those kinds of things. And if you know braille, you can also, you know, read in the dark. I just saw that NFB shared this link that the United States just became part of this treaty that's made up of like 78 countries or something that is promoting accessible books and I think that it's really great because it promotes education and information and accessible books. Number nine is it's harder to judge people by how they look. So whether it's how they physically look or the clothes that they're wearing, when you're blind or visually impaired, it's harder to do that. So you have to actually see what they do or what they say and the actions that they do to see what kind of person they are. And I think that's really important. Number 10 is being able to be part of the blind community. So there are hundreds of millions of people all around the world that are blind or visually impaired. And through the internet and technology, we can connect with the people around us locally or nationally or internationally, whether it's through Facebook groups or email lists or even on YouTube. And I really like to hear each person's journey. I mean, everybody has a different story and a different amount of vision. And it's great to be able to share experiences and support each other. Like, how do you deal with this? And I deal with it in this way. And so you can kind of encourage other people and they can encourage you back. There's so many great people on these communities. And if you haven't yet, definitely find a community. It can definitely help you and benefit you a lot. So those are just 10 positives of being blind and visually impaired, but there's so many more. What do you guys think? What positives have you found of being blind or visually impaired? Leave those in the comments below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up below and don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell for more videos on how to live accessible. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you guys in the next one.